What is up XRP community? Welcome back to another video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new for daily content. And if you want to give me a present, smash that like button. Take a moment to Will Smith that like button. Thank you in advance. I want to show you this clip here from Patrick Bet David talking about Klaus Schwab in a recent clip that's been going viral because it's such an absurd clip and the things he says. Enjoy. Watch this. Honestly, you think this is from a movie? Like, it, did they literally hire this guy? To, and it's like, mm -hmm. no, this is not a movie. This is how they market. So if, if some of you guys were afraid about COVID, look how he injects the fear of cyber attack and other things in his method of marketing. So press play. Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. I, I don't understand. Can I can I ask you? Yeah, sure. This is not my show, okay? Yeah. So I want to be respectful. Can you put up the Apple 1984 ad? Identical. It's the same music. Yes. You just, it's, 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 it's like it's like just identical. Literally. It's the first thing I thought about. <laughs> is that yeah, right? so the first thing I is thought that, about. It, it yeah. straight up is like you wouldn't. That's they, the they, face. Don't play it. Just that, show the face. That looks is, like this, the, this you can't the, use this the audio. Is the guy who is. Like that's Klaus Schwab on the screen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so tell me that is not the exact same. But person. think about that yeah. Germany. Literally you think about like Adolf. It's you not think the look, about it's even 1984. The it's the the message. How is he so convincing weird. people like a Joe Biden to say, "Let me announce my candidacy campaign to be Build Back Better," which he's the Build Back Better guy. So why are people buying into this guy? Why does he have so much influence over people? So the answer comes down to money. Okay. Actually. So it comes down to money. But he doesn't have money. He well, gets money. He doesn't money. have money. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. And it's not even. It's not even this man. I mean, as I again, I gotta gotta tell you something. I re, I was asked by the Wall Street Journal to review a book that he wrote. What in like early 2020 or 2021? Right. A couple years ago. And through reading that book, I get the sense that he's just a sincere individual who has had this passion for 50 years, and in his own heart is just one man who has his views. They're views that I deeply disagree with, but. He happens to have exercised influence because everyone else with money, 360 degrees surrounding him, had a use for that. Okay, Larry Fink is on the board of the World Economic Forum of Davos. Klaus Schwab doesn't have money, or not in a you know, seriously large-scale way. Larry Fink controls, 20, controls 8 to $10 trillion under the purview of one man. That's probably he, the largest— He was. He was. He, Larry being who—you're talking about BlackRock, Larry yeah, Fink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean that, that is— Probably the largest aggregation of capital under one man's authority. No question. In human history, history, more than the Dutch East India Company, okay? And he's in the board of the World Economic Forum of Davos. So what does this accomplish? It is a front. That is what this is. This is a front. And you know what? These things always come in three-letter acronyms, right? ESG, DEI, SRI, Socially Responsible Investing, CSR. My favorite three-letter acronym is the CCP. You look at Klaus Schwab, he elevates the CCP. He talks about the Chinese model of dealing with COVID-19. Not in a way not to do it, but in the way to do it. Right. So, so here's the way this game works, okay? The Black Rocks of the world apply constraints to the West. Emissions caps, what kinds of energy you can and cannot use, what kinds of diversity you must have. They apply that to the West without applying those same constraints in places like China. I'll give you a very specific example, okay? They're pressuring companies like Exxon to adopt scope three emissions caps. That causes companies like Exxon to drop oil projects. Now, a couple years ago, there's an oil project in the Sichuan province of China. Chevron drops it. You might wonder, hey, maybe this is part of the fight against global climate change. Maybe that project isn't proceeding. You'd be wrong. That same project is proceeding just under new ownership. Who's the new ownership? It is PetroChina. Now you take a look at who's one of the larger shareholders of PetroChina. It is none other than BlackRock, the same party who's oh, wow. pressuring firms Can like pull up Exxon and Chevron. Yeah. So, so the interesting thing here is that 
taketh from the left hand and giveth to the right. That's uh, last time I checked, we we're supposed to be fighting global climate change. I'm just and saying yet, a, a three card Monty going on. Follow exactly. the money. It's and like then the one World Economic Forum is this is this front that gives this that sort of creates this veneer mm -hmm. of legitimacy. When in fact, because it's a nonprofit global allegiance and organization conceived by this elderly Swiss gentleman, Klaus Schwab, when in fact it is just a vehicle for advancing an agenda that impedes the objectives of the West without laying a finger on China or the Chinese economy. Mm. And so the CCP is the most relevant three letter acronym looking by the disease. I'll give you another little mystery here. Why is it part of the global ESG agenda to be hostile? towards nuclear energy. So the first paradox is why do they shift production to China and they're okay with it? Oh, and by the way, for any climate activists listening to this, I mean, I'll, just to give you a fact to think about tonight when you go to bed, methane leakage, is, a unit of methane is 80 times worse for global warming than carbon dioxide, okay? People talk about carbon emissions. Well, if you want to actually have a database debate, you can't just talk about carbon. You have to talk about the difference between carbon dioxide, methane, and other forms of carbon. Turns out methane leakage is 80 times worse for global warming than carbon dioxide. Guess where methane leakage is worse? in places like Russia and China. So when you shift production from the U.S. to other parts of the world, it's not just that it's net neutral with woke washing. It's worse than that because you're actually contributing to more methane leakage into the atmosphere than you were even in the U.S. You've done even more harm on your own terms. Even if you subscribe to this crazy religious zealotry, even if you subscribe to that, you have failed on your own terms. So that's the first mystery. Now, I'll give you a second mystery, and then you see the conclusion. The second mystery is why are they hostile to nuclear energy? Because you would think if you were opposed to all this carbon emission stuff, you would be embracing the greatest form of carbon-free, large-scale, reliable energy production known to mankind, that is nuclear energy. And yet, ESG funds, like Vanguard's ESG fund, systematically, by rule, exclude nuclear energy. Now, scratch your head for a second and ask what's going on there. The answer is this whole agenda, the anti-nuclear disposition included, is really not about climate change at all. It is about making the West apologize for its sins of the past to achieve a paradigm of global equity. The problem with nuclear energy is not that it is not good enough. It is that it is too good at solving the supposed energy crisis or clean energy crisis which means you lose the E, the environmental prong as ESG, as a Trojan horse for the S, the social agenda. And that's really what's going on here is the whole climatism and the World Economic Forum. This is a, each of these is just a front. It's a Trojan horse. It's a vehicle for advancing an equity-driven agenda that the citizenry of most democracies in the West, including the United States, would have never tolerated if you didn't disguise it in the religious veneer of COVIDism or climatism or whatever other secular religion ends up being the vehicle for advancing that. That is what's going on here.